the omnibus so many of us have been waiting for is finally here. So join me for an overview of The Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, Omnibus Volume 2 from DC Comics. So stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. So yes, the book that was not in the catalog for the longest time, a lot of people were worried, including me, that DC wasn't going to do a follow-up to Volume 1, is finally here. Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. So this is the new 52 era of Batman. Here's what the spine looks like. And we'll be putting it right next to Volume 1 here in a little bit. And then the back of the book. The book retailing for $125. So you have images here by Greg Capullo, who was the main artist on the book, of course. Hence the title of the omnibus. I kind of like the big logo right there. being It's just really aesthetically pleasing the way that it lines up right next to each other you know in case you keep your books like this on the bookshelves i think it's really cool that batman lines up like that now one thing that i do want to say is that my volume one is the first printing the second printing had a little bit better binding not as much glue and we are going to be looking at the binding of this one but here they are next to each other like most of us are going to have them on the bookshelf batman's a huge logo i know some people don't like that but to me, I think it's really cool. They did the same thing, I think, with uh, Paul Dini's Omnibus. So I can see why people didn't like it because the names are so small here and you want it to stand out. You want the individual creators to stand out. But I kind of dig that. You know, Batman in big, bold. Well, this is white letters and this is more like tan. And then the backs of the books. Now, under the dust jacket, let's check it out. This is what they look like. Even the spines line up nicely underneath the dust jacket and then the back of the book with this image of joker from endgame so let's get this book open and talk about the stories in here showing the artwork and you know trying to stay away from spoilers of course and then talk about the binding all right let's get this book opened here are what the end sheets look like and batman by scott snyder and greg capullo volume two there's that image again of Batman very reminiscent of the animated series here are all the credits you have the writers the artist the colorist letters I love the fact that they put the artists like pencilers and inkers all together and as far as the writers it is mainly Scott Snyder I know James uh, Tynan does a lot of the backup stories and does a couple of the annual stories Jerry Duggan actually kicks off this particular omnibus with Scott Snyder here is your table of contents so kicking it off and separating it by different story arcs such as endgame super heavy and then a couple of other stories to wrap up the new 52 era and then the last night on earth is collected in here so this collects a lot of different stories from the new 52 era and it kicks it off with this detective comics number 27 which is a story by scott snyder and sean murphy so it is material from Detective Comics number 27 from the New 52, keep that in mind, not the original Detective Comics 27, and collects Batman 34 to 52 from the New 52 era. Uh, annuals 3 and 4, Futures End number 1, DC Sneak Peek, Batman number 1, Detective Comics number 1000, and Batman Last Night on Earth, the three-issue miniseries. So it does collect this futuristic story from Batman or Detective Comics 27 with Sean Murphy, like I said. And in between Detective Comics 27 material and Futures and number one, Batman Futures and number one, is this story right here called The Meek. And this one is co-written by Jerry Duggan. And the artwork here is by Matteo Scaleo, who did the artwork in Black Science with Rick Remender. So it's interesting to see that both Sean Murphy and Matteo both worked with Scott Snyder as well on a Batman title. And then we get the Future's End story over here, which is interesting because it kicks off with the title five years later. So this is supposed to take five years in the future, which this I think was written about four years ago now. Yeah, it's comic book timelines, I swear. And then this right here, Endgame. So it all starts off like a normal day, Batman trying to survive from getting killed by the Justice League. That's how it all kicks off. Batman is in his, what is it called, the Justice Buster armor. And the Justice League members are trying to kill him for some reason. Now, why are they trying to kill him? Well, 
that's because, of course, it all has to do with a particular laughing character that is back, and that is the Joker. He's poisoned them with the Joker poison and now has taken them over. All the little mini stories in the back are in here. This is the one, for example, from James uh, Tynion and Kelly Jones. And then we go back to the regular ongoing Endgame story. So this is Endgame Part 2. That's right. The Joker is behind everything. He is back. And he is back with a vengeance after the events of Joker's um, death, death... Not death in the family. Death of the family. He didn't get exactly what he wanted out of that. So now he is back and he's making Batman suffer for all the things that happened through there. He didn't actually have the end game that he wanted in that particular story. So that's why he comes back here. And he wants to destroy Gotham City. He wants to have everybody infected by the Joker poison. So they're all losing their minds. There's a lot of good backup stories here. And the one thing I will say about Endgame, since I've read what is collected in here, is that it is missing a lot of the Joker Endgame tie-ins, which I wish they had collected. They're not necessary, really. You can read this. Uh, this is annual number three right here is where they place it in between some of the Endgame chapters. But what I was saying is things like um, Arkham Manor Endgame, Batgirl Endgame, uh, Detective Comics Endgame, and then Gotham Academy Endgame. All those one-shots are missing from here. They're still collected in the Joker Endgame trade paperback or hardcover, but they are not here. Um, I kind of wish they had added them. And like I said, they're not necessary, but from a completist standpoint, even though they're not written by Scott Snyder, I wish that they had added them here. I do want to show this right here because it is the return of Sam Keith doing a backup story of Batman during this Endgame thing. So everything is involved here. The Court of Owls, Joker, all of Batman's family is here. The entire Gotham is just falling apart and they're all trying to keep it together. Uh, you even have Bluebird there and here's the Bat family trying to stop all of this. And it ends with a huge battle, the most like graphic battle between the Joker and Batman, which leaves Gotham without Batman. Something happens to Bruce Wayne at the end of Endgame, but not for long. Censoring that final page of Endgame because Gotham needs a Batman. And that's what this little bunny rabbit looking thing is. This is from the story arc Super Heavy. So we have a new Batman. He's the super armored Batman now going around and stopping all these villains. Now, throughout these pages, like I said, Bruce Wayne is missing. He's gone. But I mean, how long is that going to last? You read comics long enough, you know, nothing really lasts forever. But for the time being, we have a new person that is Batman. There's a couple of annuals right here. What Bruce Wayne might have been up to. And then we're introduced to one of the creepiest characters that Scott Snyder created. Let me see if I can find him. This guy right here, Mr. Bloom. And he has taken over Gotham. This is what the new Batman looks like outside of his armor. And of course, this new supervillain wants to take over Batman. So... The super heavy armored Batman needs help from everybody, including a returning Bruce Wayne to the mantle. So maybe, maybe not by the end of Scott Snyder's run, Bruce Wayne will be Batman. You can find out for yourself. And then the last couple of stories we get in here, is issue number 51, Gotham Is. And this is really the final issue of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo on New 52 Batman. There was an issue 52, that one is called The List. This one here, but this one is written by James Tynion and drawn by Radley Rosmo. So this is issue 52 of New 52 Batman, which ends that era and leads into Rebirth. Now there is material from Detective Comics 1000 in here, and that is Batman's Longest Case. Snyder and Capullo are back together telling Batman's Longest Case. This is a cool story. Uh... It actually has Batman meeting some of the world's greatest detectives in DC continuity. And you can be surprised uh, who all guest stars in this particular story. And speaking of reuniting, the team is back together. And censoring the final page there of Detective Comics material. But with this right here. And this is Batman Last Night on Earth. That is what's collected in here. All three issues of that miniseries is in here. And this story reunites not just Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, but one of the most unsung heroes of this run, and that is Danny Mickey. 
Danny Mickey's inks are freaking superb. The amount of detail that he puts on everything. Like, yes, Caputo loves drawing eyeballs, like close-up on eyeballs, flies, uh, close-up on the flies' faces. But Danny Mickey's inks just makes Capullo's pencils pop out even more. He is a phenomenal inker. From the days of, uh, I think he was at Extreme Studios. Um, he came out of the Rob Liefeld studio, Extreme Studios. Now, this story right here is kind of like his bookend to his stories of Batman. Uh, if you say Batman Zero Year is his Batman Year One, then this is his Dark Knight Returns. This is the bookend to everything that he wrote for the New 52. So you have the character of Bruce Wayne, who might be crazy. He might be in an insane asylum. And all these years having to pretend to be Batman, and everything is inside of his head. Or could it all be real? Here, let us let me show you exactly what we're dealing with here. Could it actually be a possible future where he's hanging out with the head of the Joker, his worst enemy, and he has to bring the Justice League back together again to stop a new nemesis. And he's teaming up with characters that he didn't think was possible to team up with, and everybody looks different in this possible future. Nobody trusts each other. And what happened to all his friends? Well, this is Batman Last Night on Earth. And you can find out exactly what ended up happening to all the characters by reading this. And like I said, this works as the final story. Yeah, I realized that he did uh, metal and death metal. But I think as far as his Batman stories, this is his final story. Now, the extras in the back. We have a variant cover gallery. These here supplied by Andy Kubert. Really love that one right there where he's fighting the Red Hood. Andy Kubert and Brad Anderson. It's an awesome one from The Killing Joke. <laughs> and just some other variant covers throughout uh, the New 52. Right here. I want to say, is that from Teen Titans Go? Yeah, I thought so. No, they were really close in Teen Titans Go. 75th anniversary. That's the Green Lantern 75th anniversary. This is one is by Tony S. Danielle. Andy Kubert again. Look at that Alex Ross cover. This one is awesome. This is uh, from Harley's Little Black Book variant from Batman 47. Neil Adams. That's a badass one right there from Rafael Albuquerque. And Terry and Rachel Dotson there. Ed Bennis. So you get all different artists. These, these are connecting covers, I want to say. Yeah, from Batman 50 and Superman 50. These are all connecting covers. They're all collected in here, like these spread pages that you're looking at. Lee Bermejo and Tyler Kirkland. Damn, there was a lot. There was a lot of Batman Superman 50. There, I'm skipping a bunch. And here's some more variants from Last Night on Earth. The Endgame cover pencils by Greg Capullo. This is before Danny adds his inks on there. The character sketch from Super Heavy right here. An interior artwork. I had to skip a couple of pages revealing uh, some things that are spoiler. And then sketch pages here from Greg Capullo for layouts for Last Night on Earth. And page progression from Greg Capullo. Lettering script for this section that you're looking at here. All these pages. And then an afterword from Scott Snyder from 2019. And Batman. All right. As far as the binding of this book, here's what the eye looks like. The book has 928 pages, not as much as Volume 1. And to be honest, you know, the stories aren't as strong as Volume 1. I think with Volume 1, it, you kicked it off with Court of Owls. And even when it was a little bit down with, uh, to me at least, with the Joker uh, death of the family, I, I think there were some really high points. With this, there were some ups and downs. I really liked Endgame. I think it went on a little too much. Super Heavy was kind of hit and miss. It's a little unbelievable at times, but that's just me. Uh, so for people wondering, you know, is this worth the pickup? Absolutely. Like, seriously, if you enjoyed Volume 1, you're going to get a lot more of that in this volume. Uh, and no reason, I mean, your Volume 1 can't be left alone on a bookshelf. And there's nothing wrong if you can do that. If you have that kind of power to just put a Volume 1 without a Volume 2 on a bookshelf... Man, props to you. But that, as they say, is that.
If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors that are both having Black Friday sales. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the check out and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and that was the content the page count and build of this omnibus let me know in the comments down below if you've picked this up if you have volume one and you were on the fence about this because you heard it wasn't as good if you read the stories in here what you thought of them and what you thought of scott snyder's run as a whole in the new 52 batman if you have any more questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And please, everyone, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy and stay safe out there. And much love.